Were you aware that a story alleging sexual misconduct against you was about to be dropped? So we had heard a rumor about an odd question in December that was asked by a CP24 reporter to uh, Rana uh, Ambrose. Um, and uh, I understood uh, that, uh, well, one, we, you know, we had uh, knew that uh, it was incorrect and we didn't worry about it um, at the time, um, where um, I became alerted that uh, this uh, smear, this attack was, this lie was brewing was when uh, two uh, uh, eyewitnesses who would have been uh, uh, at the event in 2013, got calls from CTV. Uh, these are the when? When did they get the, calls? The night before. The night before. Let's go back to the Rana thing though for a second. Uh, this is second hand. Okay. Um, but it was reported to me that she was asked if I had um, uh, uh, dated uh, or sexually harassed uh, uh, a staff member at the time uh, of, of hers. This was back in December when that question surfaced. And then you heard nothing about that afterward? Uh, well, we didn't take it very seriously because um, uh, she did have a staff member who I dated uh, who was a huge fan of mine and, and uh, um, said that that's ridiculous, Patrick's uh, uh, a gentleman. And so we just thought it was a rumor that maybe the Liberals had planted and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't credible. I've heard that your staff knew that the story that did come out was on its way as early as the weekend before. That's three or four days in advance. Are you aware of this? Uh, I became uh, aware of the seriousness of this uh, the night before uh, based on those uh, uh, two phone calls uh, that we had got from the eyewitnesses who had told CTV that their story was incorrect. But your staff heard, I'm told, days earlier. Uh, Is that true? It, it, there there, there are, are rumors to that uh, effect. Uh, I, um, I worked nonstop as leader of the party, and so sometimes they would shelter me from uh, uh, information that uh, uh, was not pertinent or wasn't serious. There was always rumors flying around about different things that might be happening in the legislature. Um, and so, um, you know, they could have heard about this and not uh, taken it to me. So you heard from the witnesses that they got a phone call the night before. And I immediately reported it back to my team. And what was done about it? Uh, they told me that they were going to ask for a, 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 a meeting with CTV to um, uh, deal with this, uh, that, uh, uh, the, that it was an absolute fabrication and that CTV should not ever broadcast something that was uh, uh, an absolute lie. So at that point, what, you thought the story would be quashed? I, I, I had hoped that uh, CTV would do their due diligence and realize that these were um, fabricated stories. When did you receive official word that a story was going to be broadcast imminently? So I was uh, playing uh, tennis a, um, at the time and my assistant came on to the tennis court uh, and said, uh, uh, urgent, uh, the team needs to see you, and they rushed me back to my uh, uh, apartment. And this was probably 5.30, uh, 6 o'clock on the night that this all broke. Uh, January 24th. It was 4.24 when one of your staff got an email with a series of allegations pertaining to these two women and sexual misconduct on your part. Were you told who these two women were? Were you given their full names? They didn't uh, show me uh, the letter um, uh, until, uh, until all, the, all the team members were there at my apartment. And they showed me the letter. There was the one name that CTV gave us and the other name that CTV gave us. They only gave us the first name um, uh, of the accuser from 11 years ago. And so um, it's like being attacked by a ghost. It, it was very difficult to um, respond to other than say this incident never happened. It's an absolute lie. So in, in this first case, they only gave you the first name of the accuser. Did they give you the date when it happened? It, based on uh, how they described it in the letter, um, it, it became very clear that it was 11 years ago. But did they give you a month, a year? Did no. they give that to you? No. So you didn't get a full name of the accuser, you didn't get a month and date that it All they said occurred. it was during uh, the academic year. In terms of the time span, what did they say about when the story would air? You were given this list of allegations. In a few hours. Five and a half hours, to be precise, correct? Would time have made a difference here? Absolutely. You know, very quickly, we were able to do our due diligence. You know, a week later, when I got my strength back, and I was able to go through this whole list. You know, time gave me the ability to refute these and show 
factually how this was impossible. Um, but they didn't give us that time. It was, um, it was like being shot in the back. And so you feel that if you had had the opportunity to defend yourself, this would have played out very differently? Absolutely. There was a request in the letter from CTV for an on-camera interview. Why didn't you accept that? We sent a lawyer's letter saying that uh, this was uh, an absolute lie, uh, that to uh, not uh, air this and to give us the courtesy of a response. Did you feel like there was an opportunity being offered to state your side of the equation? It felt like it was a hit job and they weren't interested in the truth. So what happened? Everybody's gathered at your apartment and you're having conversations and what's the discussion? What's the plan? We're all horrified by the allegations. My uh, senior team recommended that uh, we have a press conference and that uh, I immediately uh, um, tell uh, the truth, to, to tell my side of the story that these are absolute lies, it's not who I am, it's not how I was raised. Um, and, and, and that's what I did that night. How many people were in your apartment at that time? A number. Uh, it's a bit of a blur. I, you know, like 20, like 5? I have a small apartment and I, I bet you at one point we might, might have had 15 people there. Did anybody say at any point, you can't survive this? So, everyone said it was going to be very difficult, um, uh, but uh, uh, only uh, one friend uh, from Ottawa who wasn't part of my core team that told me, he said, I don't think you can survive this. These allegations are just too vicious. Um, but, uh, you know, my, my core team, um, you know, certainly didn't tell it to me. They only mentioned uh, this was going to be difficult. And so... At that point in time, when everybody was gathered in your apartment, did you feel like you had their support? Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they were preparing to uh, defend my, my name. They, they, they were, uh, the, the agreement, they said, what do you want to do, Patrick? Do you, do, do you want to defend? And I said, yes, this is, these are absolute lies, and, and let's make sure that uh, we expose the truth. And then they said, okay, let's get to work. Did anybody yes. doubt this? Did anybody say, did you do it? They, they asked me what my response to the letter was, and I said it's absolute lies, and, and that was good enough for everyone. So you felt like you had the support of your campaign team I and your I felt so advisors. at the time. And you're saying they advised you to hold a press conference? Yes. So you did that? I did. And you walked up to the podium at 9.53 p.m. Were you aware that the very minute you started speaking, a tweet would be sent out from your senior campaign staff with their resignation? No. Uh, I found out when I got back to my apartment. Uh, I thought they were going to be waiting for me outside of the press conference. Uh, um, but you know, it, it's, it's very disappointing um, when people that you uh, trust uh, abandon you. But uh, you know, I don't want to. Um, there's no point of harboring on that now. Um, you know, it was obviously uh, um, you know, things fell apart that night, and uh, and the people that I trusted that would be prepared uh, for that moment. Uh, 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 obviously weren't. You spoke for just over a minute and when you left the podium, you were expecting that your campaign team would be by your side as you walked down the hallway? That's what I was informed. And frankly, um, it's difficult to explain, but I'm, uh, my, my sisters are like my best friends uh, and they wanted to be there. They wanted to walk with me and they were told they weren't allowed to by my campaign team. Um, and so you know, they were horrified like I was um, when uh, the three of my senior members of the campaign weren't there. And then said you walked down that hallway alone. Who specifically told you to set up that press conference, that that was a good idea? Uh, the, the core members of my campaign team were planning everything um, in my apartment. They were drafting the statement, setting up the press conference, booking it. I'm not sure who in particular uh, it was their decision, but it would have been a member of our, 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 our the senior campaign team. That they advised you to hold a press conference and while you were speaking your truth, quit on you. How much of a betrayal is that to you? It, it was deeply, uh, deeply uh, hurtful and, and disappointing. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not going to hold... I, I can't harbor on that moment. I just want to get to the bottom of who made up these lies, why this has happened. That's what I want to expose. I realize some of these guys are, are political mercenaries. They go and work for whatever the job is uh, at the time. Um, I just want to find out who was complicit in this and, and, um, and, and expose the truth. But when you left the podium, the plan was still to fight. So what changed between that point 
and your resignation in the early morning hours. The world came crashing down uh, when the news that senior staff had quit uh, and caucus uh, started to demand a resignation um, and it just snowballed from there um, to the point, uh, you know, I was thrown under the bus pretty quickly. By your own team is what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? It, it, it was politically expedient at the time. To didn't matter about the allegations. Didn't matter about the truth. It was politically expedient at the time to, um, to, to to throw me under the bus. There was a series of conference calls that night among caucus members, correct? Mm -hmm. And you listened in on them. Yeah, my communication director uh, called in um, halfway through, uh, and uh, we listened in for a few minutes. Then I spoke and said that. Uh, uh, I would always do what's right for the PC party. I, I, I love the PC party. I've been a member since I was 14, and I would do what's right for the party, but I, I didn't want to resign. I wanted a chance to meet with caucus um, in person uh, to refute uh, these allegations and then together make a decision on, on how to go forward. So you say you want to fight the allegations. So what brought you to the point where at 1.25 in the morning you resigned? Well, the, the resignation was actually sent out to on my behalf without my uh, permission at the time. Uh, um, I thought they were... What? I, I, I was... You're saying you didn't actually resign? Uh, I had told the caucus I would do what's ever in the best interest of the party. Uh, and uh, I was in another room with my sisters who were consoling me for what was uh, happening. Um, and I thought I would have been uh, shown uh, um, the email or a draft of what was being prepared. Um, and, and then I found out it's all done. and. And frankly, um, this night just got worse and worse as it went on, and at, at which point uh, I'm horrified, I'm hurt, I'm in a state of shock. It's sort of like being in a car accident. You, you don't even know what's happening. And, and, and that's when I um, went back to, to Barry, consoled by family and friends. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying here. You're saying you didn't actually agree to the resignation? It was done. Uh, it was done. Uh, the, I never even saw the statement that was sent out. Did you agree to the resignation? Did you agree to resign? No, it was, it was, listen, I was prepared to do what was right for the party. I, I was, need a sharp answer uh, yeah, here, no, forgive I, me. But the resignation was sent out without my permission, but I... So you would not have resigned? It was done without you? I don't know what I would have done the next day, um, but I wanted to meet caucus in person. I, 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 I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I wanted an opportunity uh, to tell my side of the story. I wanted an opportunity uh, to explain um, what, had, uh, what had happened and find out who had, uh, who had been behind this. And so, but events moved very quickly. And frankly, I wasn't able to rely on, on my team. So your team put out your own resignation, you're saying? And by that point, it was too late to claw it back. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I, underst I understood uh, that they were drafting a copy of the resignation. I was shocked when I found out that it was sent out without, without even an opportunity to see it. So you knew that it was in the works? The resignation. I knew that a member of my team was talking to uh, caucus about uh, how that resignation should be. So that that implies that you were agreeing to the fact that no, you would. No, no, I, 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 I was still of the opinion that I should assist to to, to see caucus myself in person. So these events moved uh, uh, faster than I was uh, aware of, or 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 supportive of, or it was just it the, the, it was a horrific night. Take me to the moment when you learned that you were no longer the leader. I, I walked into a, a side room. I found out that it was sent, and I said, already? Uh, and, and I just went back into uh, my room in disbelief. Um, Did you cry? I, I, I was in tears for a few days. How can you not be? Your, your name has been maligned, attacked uh, um, uh, in national TV. Uh, for something that isn't even true. How, how can you not be horrified? How can you not be hurt, uh, hit by a, a, a train? You know, I, it, it was horrific. And, and frankly, if it wasn't for the support, you know, I was just, uh, I was a, a train wreck. If it wasn't for the support I was getting back home from, from, from family and friends and, you know, whether it's, you know, going into a hockey rink in Barrie and everyone's saying, we know this isn't you, this is, this is BS. Whether it's going into the gas station or the hospital, or people just knocking on my door in Barrie, coming over. I had, I had people coming over with, with baked goods saying, we know this isn't you, Patrick. And um, it, it was that time back home in Barrie that uh, gave me the strength to fight. The next day, Alec Velshi, your former chief of staff, who tweeted his resignation while you were at the podium, showed up at Queen's Park ostensibly to work. How does that make sense? 
Listen, I, I'm, I'm deeply disappointed by what uh, transpired. Um, deeply uh, disappointed. The, the people I needed to be by my side during my moment of need uh, uh, weren't. But let me say, there is uh, so many good people in the party. So many people, candidates, caucus members, um, party members have reached out saying, we're behind you. Uh, we know this isn't you. Uh, you know, rallying to my side, not only over phone calls and emails, but publicly on, on, on social media. You know, I put out a Facebook post uh, showing how I could refute these uh, false allegations, and it was the most shared and liked Facebook post I've ever done in my life. Uh, and uh, it, it just it showed to me the support there is uh, in the party. Um, and frankly, I got calls from all three political parties, from friends in different parties, saying. Um, you know, we know this is, is, is nonsense. And so uh, as much as I was disappointed um, by the people close to me, I know, you know, people in politics, there's still many, many people that are very decent and good. The sequence of events that followed in the days that continued, your campaign manager went to the Moroni camp, your chief of staff went to Fideli, many of your staff members who stayed were fired. And then four days after you resigned, after allegations of sexual misconduct, the president of the PC party, Rick Dystra, was also hit with allegations of sexual misconduct, and he resigned. Should we just chalk up that timing to coincidence? You know, that's for you to speculate on. Um, I'm, uh, you know, my only focus is, is clearing uh, the allegations against me to show that they're absolute lies, that they're, um, that they're incorrect. I'm sure you've taken time in the last number of days and weeks to step back and look at this chronology of events, at this whirlwind. What do you make of it? What happened here? So obviously there's a number of theories uh, and you know, I don't want to um, jeopardize the investigation that's going on. Um, so I'm not gonna speculate, but I will say we're gonna tone, turn over every stone and my political adversaries who I believe are behind this um, they'll be exposed. In time, we're going to get the truth out and they will be exposed. When you say investigation, what do you mean? This isn't a criminal investigation. Uh, I don't want to jeopardize the investigation that is uh, What investigation? Underway. Well, who? Uh, I don't want to jeopardize that by saying uh, 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 who is involved, but we are going to get to the bottom of this and we're going, to we're going to turn over every stone possible and we will expose the truth. Who are your political adversaries? Well, I, 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 I think, unfortunately, uh, they're both inside and outside the, 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 the party. Was this, in your opinion, a political coup? Uh, I believe this was initiated for political purposes. What do you make of the timing of this event that these women came forward, in one case, 11 years after it happened? Is this, again, women finding their voices in the spirit of the Me Too movement or is this curiously timed with an election in June? This was a fabricated political assassination. There, you know, we, we had so much good going on. You know, I just launched a policy platform that was uh, praised even by the Toronto Star, praised even by the Toronto Star, uh, the, the People's Guarantee. It was an absolute hit. We had more members than ever before. We had more money in the bank than at any time in recent memory. We were leading in, in the polls for almost two years straight. We just won by-elections in places the PCs had never won in modern memory. Um, we were cruising to a victory uh, in June, and uh, this, was, uh, um, this was obviously um, uh, a political hit. What would somebody's motivation be to take you out? I have a number of political adversaries, and so um, I, there's a, a number of people who would benefit from what happened, um, and I hope that uh, uh, in the course of the investigation we'll be able to expose uh, who was involved in this. Do you have a hunch whether this came from your own party or from opposition? I, I believe this came from my political adversaries, uh, and uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to go beyond that right now. Uh, um, the investigation is... Um, is, uh, is going to get to the bottom of that. You do understand when you say that this was a political hit job, that that implies that the women who came forward were paid or coerced or put up to doing this. That's a strong allegation. These allegations are absolute lies. Why would two women 
make up an absolute lie? I don't know. And that's what we need to find out. That's why. Maybe it's not a lie. It is. It's an app, and I can prove both of them. One, the incident happened 11 years ago at a place that didn't have a second floor, that didn't have a door. It's an absolute fabrication. That's, I lived on a single floor at that time. And the other incident, the eyewitnesses, the girl I was seeing at the time, all say uh, that, it's, that it's wrong, that her conduct for the years after that um, all uh, suggests that it was wrong. What type of person likes a comment on Facebook saying I'm a great boss, a great leader, and a great friend years after this incident, and then all of a sudden, after years of being a massive supporter, all of a sudden decides to make this allegation? It doesn't make any sense. It's ridiculous. The facts show both these allegations are fictitious. Will there be enough evidence, hard evidence, to clear your name? Well, it starts, it starts with this interview. It starts by uh, telling my side of the story. And, and let me say this, Carolyn, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I support the Me Too movement. Uh, I support the spirit of, of the Me Too movement. Uh, I think it, it strengthens society, but false allegations diminish the Me Too movement. And that's why it's really important that we don't allow false allegations to stand. The deputy leaders of your party came out the same day you resigned to say that you are entitled to a legal defense and due process. Do you feel that you are getting due process? Absolutely not. These allegations weren't taken the, 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 the justice route. This was a public assassination in the media on, in the court of public opinion. There was no due process. There, there was no, there was no uh, uh, judicial route. There was no criminal complaint. Th this was done to the media. Do you have anything to say about a person's presumption of innocence and how that applies to you? I think it's horrific that someone could be maligned, it could have their entire career thrown out the window, uh, could uh, be, uh, frankly, thrown to the wolves um, with not a, a shred um, of, of due diligence, not uh, uh, anonymous complaints uh, with, um, with shady journalism um, with no response time, um, I think it's pretty horrific. And here's the thing. If we allow this to happen, it will happen again. If we allow you know, th this type of public assassination to happen to me, it could happen to anyone. If you're alleging that you were treated unfairly and not given due process, who are you angry at the most? Is it the press? Is it your political adversaries? Is it the accusers? I am horrifically disappointed with everyone who is uh, involved in this, for everyone that was complicit. And uh, um, I hope that in time we're able to expose the truth. Uh, and uh, um, I just, I, I think it's very important that, uh, that it's exposed. Do you feel like you have to expose that truth before the election? Is there a timeline on this for you? The sooner the truth can be shown, uh, the the better. And so I'm, I'm working my heart out to get to the bottom of this. Um, and frankly, it hasn't been easy to, to talk about any of this. And the first step was, was having this first interview with you to, to, to tell my side of the story. You know, when I, uh, when I sat down with the National Post to, to go over this, when I started talking about uh, how, this, how this went down and, you know, that experience I had at RVH, I, I, I broke into tears just because it's been so emotionally draining on me this, this public attack. And, um, you know, this is the first time I've talked uh, on, on TV about it just because it's been so hard. You know, words can't describe how difficult uh, this is uh, to have the people who love you the most having to, to hear these lies about you. You know, my 103-year-old grandmother calls me every day just to, just to check up. Um, it's been rough. It's, uh, what does she say to you? Well, that she knows that's not her grandson and that she's praying for me and that she just hopes the truth comes out. And, and you know, it's their support that's given me the strength to want to to fight to expose this, to find out who's behind this. Who benefited from this? Why was this timing right before an election? Why are these allegations from years ago um, being fabricated uh, in, in the press? After you left the party, the interim leader, Vic Fideli, said he's going to root out the rot in the Ontario PC party. What's he talking about? I certainly hope he regrets that comment because it's inconsistent with the 
reality of the strong position the party was in. Um, more money in the bank than ever before. Uh, leading in public opinion polls for two years, winning by-elections everywhere. Um, an amazing policy document that everyone was proud of. Uh, an incredible slate of candidates. Uh, uh, by any, any term, uh, the party was in a very, very, very strong position. When I ran for the leadership of the party, they had 12,000 party members. No presence in the city of Toronto, no presence in Northern Ontario. Now we have more party members than any point in the party's history. We won a seat in the city of Toronto. We won a seat up north. You know, we're breaking barrier after barrier. Uh, and for anyone to say that there's problems in the party, uh, frankly, it seems like a pile on. Is it a character assassination? Is that what's going on here, in your opinion? I, I, I just hope uh, that uh, you know, whoever, you know, the individual who made those comments regrets them. Well, we know who made the comments. Yeah. There have been more concerns and criticisms against you leveled since you left office, since you left the leadership rather, about fake memberships, candidate nominations, party spending. Are any of these true? We have more money in the bank account. Anyone who wins this leadership is going to be very proud of the financial situation that the party's in. When I won the party leadership, we were $7 million in debt. And now we have a massive fund in our bank account. Uh, on memberships, when I won the party leadership, they had 12,000 party members. And now, if you believe um, you know, the parties, uh, the Vic Fidelis current assessment, it's 145,000, or the previous party headquarters assessment, it's 200,000. The way the membership rules work, members expire every month. Um, and so the membership numbers uh, change. But either way you look at it, and, I, and the numbers are set by party headquarters. It's not by the, the leader's office. Either way you look at it, we had 12,000 when I started this project. And if we're 145,000 or 200,000 members, we are the largest we've ever been. We're more diverse than we've ever been. It should be a beautiful story to celebrate the growth of the PC party. And yet it's being criticized. How do you recover from this? Even if you can clear your name, the punishment that you are no longer leader of the PC party of Ontario remains. The only thing I'm focused on is clearing my name. And if I can clear my name, um, <coughs> you know, everything else, um, you know, everything else is insignificant compared to that. I want to clear my name. I want to expose who's behind this um, because it's not right. Christine Elliott, one of the leadership candidates now, has said that if you can clear your name, you are welcome to come back and run in that leadership campaign. Will you do that? I, you know, I'm, I'm entertaining all options right now. Um, and, and frankly, the, I, the support I'm getting inside the party is uh, um, heartening. Uh, the amount of candidates, caucus members um, who are calling me to offer encouragement um, is, uh, frankly, all the leadership contenders, uh, um, you know, I think uh, speaks to the fact there's a lot of goodwill in, in, in the party. If you're not leader, will you stay on as MPP? So I'm, I'm going to examine uh, all options. Uh, I'm not making a de de decision today. Um, I, I think everything's on the table. Any concern that your nomination papers may not be signed? <laughs> you know, I know comments were made uh, by, um, by the interim leader. I think all the leadership candidates uh, have uh, uh, said otherwise. Uh, and frankly, um, uh, I know that the party membership, our candidates, um, a large number of caucus uh, are on my side. Uh, and uh, frankly, this is, this is a party I've been building for the last three years. I know every corner of the province. I know every corner of every riding association because I've been going to community functions and inviting people to join the mission I was on to defeat Kathleen Wynne on June 7th. But this party kicked you out, essentially, as leader. So do you think they'll sign your nomination papers to keep you on? You know, I, that's... that's uh, first of all, I... I I'm not going to make any decisions today of, of what I want to do next. What I do know is that there's overwhelming support in the party. Um, there's overwhelming support in, in the party uh, uh, for me. And frankly, the endless phone calls I've been getting, the very visible statements that the members of the party have been making on Twitter, both uh, candidates, MPP, uh, MP MPPs, the, the support I'm getting has been very encouraging. Will you take legal action? I'm examining uh, every legal recourse. Against whom? Well, we're examining uh, where the appropriate legal recourse would be. I've uh, spoken to 
uh, uh, some of the top lawyers in the country, and um, we're going to proceed, uh, proceed, pursue every avenue to get justice. You're talking about a defamation suit. Everything is on the table. We've spoken at length, and you've been very generous with your time and open, and I appreciate that very much. But I want to ask if there's anything else you want to say. I think in an hour we've probably uh, covered everything, but just to close with, this isn't right. Uh, it, to have someone assassinated uh, on uh, fabricated stories, um, if, this is, if this stands, um, that's not good for our democracy, that's not good for Canada. It, it, this, this shouldn't, this shouldn't, uh, it's not who we are in this country, uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to fight to expose it. Patrick Brown, thank you for your time. Thank you.